Yeah, so welcome. Uh, we're really excited to uh, present to you the uh, first public demonstration of the Mass Robotics Interoperability Standard. Um, well, let me take this off. That's a little better. So this is all about the industry coming together in a, a way that hasn't really happened before to unlock value for the industry. Um, what this is all about is robotics companies and end users for the first time being able to uh, share information in a standard open source way. Um, the Mass Robotics Interoperability Standard uh, is meant to be super simple. It's something that can be implemented very, very quickly. As a matter of fact, if you uh, have a robotic system that is ROS based, there's already um, uh, open source uh, ROS nodes that you can download that instantly make you um, a Mass Robotics uh, Interop compliant. Um, uh, companies that we've talked to who have implemented it from scratch have said it's taken uh, an afternoon to do it. So the goal was to bring sort of iterative, agile, rapid development um, processes that are, are now more standardly used in software development to standards development. Um, and to make sure that we get something out there very quickly that's easy but provides concrete value today that then the industry can build on very rapidly. So what you see here are robots from different vendors. There's two, but it's different vendors uh, that are um, implementing this standard. And then there's software written, again, independently that also implements the standard and they all just plug and play together. So while there have been efforts in the past where um, integrators have brought together information from different uh, robot vendors, this is the first time that it's, it's able to happen in an unintegrated way um, because they all conform to the same standard and it all just works. So um, this would not have been possible without the great work of a number of robotics companies, end user companies, um, and, uh, and, and really just the cooperation of the industry as a whole. I want to introduce Jason Walker from Waypoint Robotics, along with Vecna and others. Waypoint was really key in helping to move this uh, standard forward, and he's going to talk in a little more detail about what we've got going on here. Yeah, so this um, modest uh, representation up here is, uh, it's, it's four dots moving on a screen, but uh, as Daniel said, um, this is not a Waypoint fleet manager, this is not a Waypoint, uh, this is not our dispatcher product, this is a visualization tool that utilizes the interoperability standard. And with the robots in this room that are using the interoperability standard to, uh, to publish uh, location and status information, this viewer is able to take that information and display the status and location of those robots and keep it updated. So um, as an accomplishment for the community, for the industry, um, and, and I think a huge benefit to the customers and end users, this is the first time that it's happened this way. Um, the, the map, the base map that you see there is a map that was made by a Vector robot and we pulled it into the Waypoint viewer and then the, both robots are, uh, are, are supplying their data and then it's able to be visualized. So as, as much as we can with this small uh, first you know, sort of proof of life for this uh, standard, um, it's a huge accomplishment, and the the ease of making it happen is such a big deal. Um, if it were an integration project, it would be months and tons of money. Um, and as something that's built into the systems, uh, it, it's a it's a quick turnkey system. So some of the interesting things are that uh, because the standard is so simple uh, and it's able to be implemented easily. You see unintended but uh, really exciting benefits. For instance, the wireless chargers here are reporting on the same mass robotics interoperability standard. They report their location, they report their status information, and they can also use the information that the robots are publishing about their location and status uh, 
um, uh, to make uh, um, important decisions as well. So um, to talk a little bit about this particular charging approach, um, we have a representative from um, Wybotic, um, but uh, just as uh, uh, prelude, we have a next interoperability effort that is starting right now around charging infrastructure. And that's very broad. It will include wireless charging, contact-based charging, uh, even hydrogen uh, fuel cell refueling. Because, as you can imagine, as, as companies like FedEx and others are starting to adopt ro robots, um, their next question is, well, how can I support having, wire, uh, having chargers for all of these different robots if they all require different chargers? Um, so we heard that from the industry. The standards uh, group at Mass Robotics is now digging into that. But to talk a little bit more, more about this particular solution, I'll turn it over to a Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, my name is Ben Waters. I'm one of the co-founders of Webotic, based in Seattle. And, and we do autonomous charging for robots, drones, and the broader industrial automation in general. Um, and so what we have here today is these two cabinets, which are products of Waypoint that have integrated Wybotics wireless charging technology. And why we're so excited about interoperability is because we've, we've from day one of our company, architected our systems to be agnostic to, to different batteries, meaning you can programmatically tell the system what type of battery is on board that robot and, and it'll charge whatever that means. So now that there's a, a robot interoperability standard, we can apply that battery agnostic nature of our system to, to robot agnostic nature. So a, a vector robot with a 24 volt battery can charge from the same charging station as a different robot with a 12 volt battery could. And, and the benefit of that for an end user customer like FedEx is they don't have to have dozens of different charging stations to charge different robots. It's just a, a logistical nightmare and it, it's difficult for that approach to, to scale. So um, one of the things that we've got on the screen here, you might recognize the, the map in this view is the same map that Vecna generated for their robot, and it's the same map that Waypoint's robots are, are being referenced to in this forward view. And you can see that when that robot is charging the next station, the station knows that it's a vector robot, and it's charging with the vector robot specific charge settings. Um, and it's communicating back to the standard that this charging station is currently available, and, and this one is occupied. By now soon going to be available. So all of this data, even though it's not like, like Daniel was saying, it's not a mobile robot, it's still important for the broader fleet to understand uh, you know, where they are, what their status is, and, and that helps us too. You know, For example, we can do things like uh, optimize the, the rate of charge at different times of the day. So we can have the robots be available to do work during the day when they're needed, but perhaps at night you can charge slower and, and that might extend the overall lifetime of the battery pack. So lots of optimization things that, that we can do to help the robotic companies focus on robots and have confidence that they have a very optimized charging 